Many people have difficulties in reading sacred scriptures, and in fact, many of them doesn't know how to do it. But the church, as a mother, gives us a direction through a very ancient way of reading the Bible. It is called Lexi Divina, that means divine reading. And we can do it in five steps. First, reading, then meditation, prayer, contemplation, and resolution. To help you in this journey, we provided for you a compendium of Lexi Divina, which is a book, like a journal, containing all the references for daily reading for the whole liturgical year, and a place where you can write your meditation. In addition to that, there are beautiful meditations from our founder on the theme of this year, the glorious freedom of the children of God. By purchasing one of these books, you are helping our mission and growing in knowledge of God through the scriptures. Hello everyone, happy Sunday! I'm Cissé Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us today, March 7th, the third Sunday in Lent. For the liturgy of this Sunday, we will be reading Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17 for the first reading. So Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. The responsorial psalm will be Psalm 19. Second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse, verse, chapter 1, verse 18, then we go to verse 22 to 25, and the Gospel is from the Gospel, uh, is from St. John, chapter 2, verse 13 to 25. We can start the reading of the Word of God for this Sunday. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, to the third and fourth generation, of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit any one who misuse his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, or male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in the sixth day, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be longing in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. In this third Sunday, we see in this first reading that the church gives us, I remind a reminder that we need to follow the commandments and not only follow the commandments but live it. What is the difference? Many times we say that we follow the commandments but we kind of choose which one we are following or not. 
but following the commandment and living it is to bring it to life, to bring it to take root in your life and then you can really be a servant of God. Here we see God spoke to Moses, God gave to Moses the commandments, what we should do and what we should not do. But in, a, but in a sense that what we should do towards him and what we should not do towards our neighbor. How we need to love God and serve him in body, mind and soul. But what we should not do to our neighbor. Our neighbor is a son or daughter of God that deserves the same, the same respect, the same love that we do. So we need to, to give to our neighbor the same respect that we want to receive. So in this first reading, we see God speaking to his people, saying that we need to love God first, to respect him, and do not put any idol before him, any idol in our lives, but also the way that we should not act with our neighbors. God is not saying what we should do to them because out of love we will learn how to treat our neighbor but what not to do. So let's on this Sunday pay attention on the commandments of the Lord in everything that the Lord is telling us not to do and see if we find something in us that is not quite right that we are neglecting, that we are not paying attention in the way that we treat our neighbor. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are, are they than gold, very much, very much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. The psalmist is telling us that the law of the Lord, His commandments, are sweeter than honey, are more desired, needs to be more desired than fine gold. And we can ask ourselves, how do I desire God's commandments to live out His commandments? Do I really desire how, how my soul longing, how is this longing in my soul to live God's commandment? Second readings from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jewish and to Jewish and foolish to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jewish and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is one of the most beautiful passages of St. Paul that we find in St. Paul's letter. He says that everything that is wiser for human beings is not wisdom for God. But the wisdom of God is foolish in the eye of human beings, of humanity. God's wisdom is not like human wisdom. And we need to learn that and to live that. Everything that the world says that is wise and good, it is not wise and good in God's eyes. But everything that is wise and good in God's eyes 
the world will hate it. And Jesus said that in the gospel. So we can meditate upon this word today saying, Lord, what am I doing? What, what kind of wisdom do I believe? Your wisdom, Lord, or human's wisdom? And in our prayer, we can say, for sure, it's God's wisdom. But when God's wisdom appear in our lives, that are things that we don't understand, how do we react? And are we trying to make human wisdom God's wisdom? While we're here in the world, are we trying to bring it to the church and bring it to our spiritual life with God, saying, this is the right thing that we should be doing because is the, the world is doing it. That's not right. God's wisdom is not human wisdom. And when I say wisdom, is not an intellectual wisdom. It's our daily life. Everything that is pleasing in God's eyes. We need to live by God's wisdom and not by human wisdom. In the Gospel today, Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 25 says, The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changer seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remember that was what was written. Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show for us for doing, that, for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you are and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that, that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature. For he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. John is very different in the way that he writes his Gospel. So the other three Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, they are more or less very straight and forward in what they want try to convey to people. But St. John, he has those messages that you need to really read and pay attention in what he wants to say. And so first, Jesus goes to the temple and and he's mad when what he, what he sees. So he overturned the tables, he uh, poured out the coins for the of the changers, so he was mad in what he saw and asked the people to not make his father's house a marketplace. That means we need to honor God's house. Like in the commandments, to honor God, to honor the Sabbath, we need to honor God's house. Jesus wasn't unpleased by the people that were selling things, but for sure it was their hearts. They weren't selling those things. And again, these things were for sacrifices. They weren't selling things just to help people in some way. But he was doing that. They were doing that because they wanted money. They wanted to take advantage in God's temple, of God's temple. So that's why he says, don't make my father's house a marketplace. 
And the disciples remembered what was written in the Psalms. The zeal for your house will consume me. Jesus was zealous for his, father, his father's house. And then he, exp he, he says that he would rebuild the temple within three days. He wasn't talking about the building, the temple that every, everyone knew. He was talking about his body. He was already giving them hints about resurrection. And it, St. John says the disciples only really believed after his resurrection. So see how slow to believe we are. Only after resurrection they, they believed in what Jesus said. But Jesus wasn't disappointed on them. Why? Because he, he didn't need human, a human person to testify about him because he was God and he knew human heart. He knew the human person. So we can pray today saying, Lord, you know me. You know everything in me. You know when I can maybe betray you or when I can be faithful until the end. But tell the Lord that you want to be faithful until the end. He is not disappointed with us. He only wants our conversion. And again, is Lent, time for conversion. May the Lord bless us on this third Sunday in the meditation of His sacred word to help us to understand what He wants for His spiritual life, for us to follow the commandments, for us to love His commandments more than gold, more than honey, more than things in this earth. His wisdom is not human wisdom. And we are called to understand that. And then to keep the Sabbath, to keep our Father's house free from greedy, but full of people that are there to praise our Lord and God. Amen.